was doodling airplanes again. My wife, Jane, said I had an obsession. But then she read magazine articles on psychology, and she was always saying things like that. My brother-in-law said I was bugged. But then he's a sports car fan, and he talks like that. But it all started a few weeks before when we had the Abbots over to dinner. Wonderful dinner, Jane. Doris, we'd better be getting on. Have to get up early in the morning. We're flying up. Say, why don't you kids come along? Plenty of room in the plane. Plane? What plane? Well, we have an airplane now, didn't you know? Yikes, am I ever out of my class? Well, it makes more sense than that speedboat rig you've got. Oh, come on now. Sure, it's a used plane, and it costs me just about the same to operate as my car does. And you want us to fly up to the mountains in it? Oh, no. Doris, your husband's mad. <laughs> Surely you don't mean you'd be afraid to fly. You're darn right I would. And a little flivver with you as a pilot? Say, when did you become a pilot? It's not a little flivver, and I've had my private pilot's license for over a month now. I thought the CAA had regulations about things like that. It's the FAA, and they do have regulations. They license the plane just like a new one, so it's quite safe. Well, I love flying. It's a lot of fun. You fly, too? I mean, actually drive the plane? Well, sure. You fly? Well, I'm just learning, but in about two more hours, I'm going to solo. And we're even planning for Steve to learn on his summer vacation. The kid, too? Mm -hmm. Sure, Steve and Doris do all my navigation. Navigation? Yeah, you know, maps. They're good at it. Well, come on, Doris, time to go. Well, good night. night. Wonderful night. evening. Well, if that didn't take the frosting right off of the cake. Imagine old Sam flying an airplane. And I know he's not as good a driver as I am. And Dora's flying, too. And a kid to learn next summer. Well, that was what started it. I'd never known anyone who owned a plane before. But suddenly it seemed as if planes were everywhere. Everywhere I went, something about planes popped up. Frank's checked out there on the 182. He's going to fly his whole territory. I'm not just fishing. And so Harry's going to fly us down there, and we'll be there in plenty of time for the sailing we got And pretty soon Sam popped up again, too. In spite of my dire predictions, he and Doris made it back safely from the mountains. I apologized. Jane made me for casting aspersions on his plane and his abilities as a pilot. Now, Sam's a good friend of mine, but he's just a natural-born salesman. When he believes in something, he sets out to convince the world. But he wasn't going to sell me on that madness. It's logic, man, said Sam. Now look, he said, you're a man of logic and intelligence. And I complimented him on his astute judgment. So then he started quoting some figures. So, dividing 30,000 by 50 and again by 120, the result is 600, from which you subtract 250. Old Sam can really work with those figures. But what it boils down to is he's clipped a neat 350 hours off his travel time. Now, 350 hours is, let's see, divided by 8 hours, that's uh, 44 divided by 5, over 8 weeks of working time. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad, Sam. Not bad. And look, Tom, that 30,000 miles of highway driving that I replaced with my plane, that's 250 hours of relaxed flying instead of 600 hours of hard driving. The next day we went golfing. Sam ran out that old refrain again. This time, between car and plane, with gas, oil, depreciation, passenger miles, and so on and so on. The net effect of this figure wizardry was a little startling. It only cost him 570 bucks, and he gained eight weeks in which he increased his sales several thousand and had time to spare. Well, just between you and me, that Sam's pretty sharp with those figures. Sometimes I wish he weren't quite so sharp. The next time Sam started running that same record again, I put a stop to it. After all, there's more to this than just economics. I get to see myself flying into the side of a mountain to save an hour or two. Or suppose the engine just up and quit on me, right up in the middle of the air. I might as well admit it. Frankly, I'm a coward. Well, man, engines just don't quit. And you don't just stop in the middle of the air. There are more uncontrollable factors on the highways than there are in the air. Yet you accept that. Look at the facts. It's a safe investment. Or I'll tell you, it may be, but not for me. Not yet. Sam said I was hard-headed, and I said he was soft-headed. Jane came in and said, you're both headed, headed for bed, because I had to drive 300 miles the next day. Well, it was that trip that really knocked the feathers off the goose. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm used to driving thousands of miles a month because I cover a big territory. But the pressure was really on me this trip. I was going to make a full-scale presentation that afternoon for a client that might well spend 100,000 a year. 
Traffic was unusually heavy, and I was behind schedule. So naturally, that's when the tire picked to go flat. It cost me an hour and a half to change that tire and get it fixed. I called my client and told him I was going to be late. He wasn't happy about it. I was late and dirty, but I crossed my fingers and dashed to my client's office. signed a contract with a competitor. Well, my company's hotshot salesman sure did well by himself. Missed the biggest deal of the year, all because of the lousy traffic and the lousy flat tire. Now, here I was in this lousy motel room with nothing to do but doodle-doodles when I should have been counting my commission. If I ever needed an airplane, it was today. You're hard-headed, Tom. You're hard-headed. <laughs> he's checked out now, and he's gonna fly his whole territory in less than half. Glad you got here in time, Tom. That was only a dream. The hard reality was that I was headed home without a sale in my pocket. So it was then and there that I decided something had to be done. I headed home and told my wife, now look here, something has to be done. Did I say before that Jane always kept up with things? Well, she does. I don't know where she digs up these things, but she came up with these little books called Who Me Fly and Look Who's Flying. And she was waiting for me with a full report and a big smile. She had it all figured out that if I took flying lessons, she could take them too, on the family plan. And it fit very neatly into the budget. So around the house, we started calling each other Amelia and Lindy. But I didn't feel so much the intrepid airman the next week when I went for my first flying lesson. I had a high regard for my instructor, Bill Roberts. But then I noticed he had forgotten the parachutes. When I pointed this oversight out to him, he just laughed and said only military and stunt pilots wore shoes. Bill checked me out on the basic rules pretty quickly. Like everything else, the basis of flying safety is good common sense. By the end of a couple of hours, I realized that my fears were, if you'll excuse the pun, groundless. Thanks to Bill, I was soon making takeoffs and landings with my heart, my stomach, and the plane all in the right places. It was surprisingly easy. Modern light planes practically fly themselves. Learning the maneuvers took a little concentration, but it was fun. And there was an unexpected dividend. Up there in the blue, I forgot my problems on the ground. Sales quotas, factory delivery dates. I was feeling better than I had in my whole life. Another nice surprise was the instrument panel. You don't have to be a human univac to figure it out. In a couple of hours, that panel was as familiar as the dash of my car. Jane, of course, was taking lessons too. And if I do say so myself, she was pretty good. After eight and a half hours of dual instruction came the big day when I soloed. I think that was just about the biggest thrill of my lifetime. And when I set the plane down, Bill was waiting for me with a trophy. He forgot the scissors, but when we got inside, he cut a piece of my shirt tail, autographed it, and attached it. He said it wouldn't be many more hours before I could take passengers. Now, I've been renting planes and have logged a lot of hours, and I don't mind admitting I get the same thrill up in the air that I did the first day I soloed. I don't exaggerate when I say I opened up a whole new world for myself. As I began to cover my territory by plane, I saved enough time to make about 20% more calls. There had been some customers I was only getting to once a year, and they were glad of the additional service, and they gave me more business. But what was probably more important is that Jane and little Debbie got to accompany me on many trips. We got to go to places we wouldn't have had time for otherwise. 
Take the last sales meeting. It was in Dallas. So I rented a plane and flew down, taking Jane and Debbie with me. They took off on a shopping expedition, and I took the boss out to the airport to show him the plane I'd flown down. I figured I'd impress him, and I really did. Until he finds out how easy it is to fly, he's going to think I'm a minor genius. Incidentally, if I weren't so modest, I'd tell you what kind of a showing I made at that sales meeting. The day we got back from the sales meeting, the Abbots came over to hear about the trip. Also, my brother-in-law, Bob, the sports car fan, and his wife, Betty. Oh, it was wonderful. Tom got to attend the sales meeting while I took Debbie shopping. And then we flew over and spent the weekend with my folks. What did you think of the airport down there? Oh, man, it was terrific. I had that runway all to myself. Landed just as well as one of those airlines. Say, you kids are hung way out on this flying business, aren't you? That's all you've talked about all evening. Man, don't you realize you're taking your life in your hands when you go up in one of those things? So into the fray again. This time, though, I was on the other side of the fence. And I must say that with Sam and I both working on it, it didn't take us long to show Bob the error of his ways. And now he's come up with a plan for he and I to go in together and buy a brand new Cessna. As for my wife, well, this is a deal I didn't have to sell her on. She no longer quotes the psychology articles at me. She's too busy having fun. As far as that goes, we all are. <laughs>